Welcome to our One Greenway, One Iron Chat and delighted to be joined today by Robert Carlson. Robert, great to see you again. Uh, a very happy new year, first of all. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining us. Have you had a nice festive break um, back home in Sweden? Yeah, it's been nice. Uh, I live in America now full time. So I've been back in uh, in Europe and Sweden since uh, just before Christmas, 17th or something. So um, yeah, it's been nice. Uh, a little bit of snow, not much, but a little bit of snow and then uh, I'm going back now to, to America to prepare to, to be ready to go back to Portugal in, in the end of the month. Absolutely. I was going to say, I bet you're, bet you're ready to get back to the warmth, aren't you? Oh, mm, yeah. I live, I live in Charlotte, so I'm not... Um, it's not that warm, but it's going to be now preparing. Um, it's going to be... I'm going to go down to Florida probably a couple of times, and, and uh, I'm going to work around it a little bit. Um, normally, when I play in the European Tour, Charlotte was a good place to live, because we... Yeah. Uh, we usually played in Dubai in this time of the year, but now playing in America, it's a little bit more time on the winter. That's good. Listen, let's reflect a little bit on 2022 first of all. How would you assess the year for you from a playing perspective? Uh, kind of, um, it felt like it was two, two or three different seasons. I did play pretty good coming back uh, uh, early on. I, um, I had an injury at the end of uh, 2021, so the start of 2022 was a bit uh, rusty, but I felt like I um, I performed well. Uh, then over the summer was was poor, and then it kind of was a new start, and I played well from from September onwards. So yeah, all, all in all, it was pretty good, pretty good, and definitely trending the right way at the end of the season, which was very very encouraging. So looking forward to the season to come. And how how do you find the adjustment from the European Tour and now DP World Tour to the to the mm. Champions to Seniors Golf? How have you found that period? Um, it's a few things that are very different. The, obviously, tra uh, traveling in America is easier, much uh, much shorter trips, and normal normally uh, less time difference, and, and all those sort of things are easier. A bit cheaper as well. I mean, staying in America is easy; you can stay in the same type of hotel, kind of, yeah. kind of time. So, uh, but then we play three days, which is um, slightly different uh, mentally. I remember my first tournament I played there, I kind of went out on the first tee like we do on the European Tour. You stand there, try to be patient, not make any big mistakes, kind of work your way into the tournament. And I came off the, the, the first round with 69 or 68 and I was like four shots behind. And I was like, oh dear, that was quick. <laughs> that was way behind straight away. So obviously, senior golf now on the Champions Tour with us, the course is up a little bit easier. Uh, it's low scoring. You need to be more aggressive from the, from the first tee. And, um, and play a little bit more aggressive and, and uh, yeah, it's shorter. It's, it's a little bit more of a sprint than playing four days uh, on, on courses that are set up a little bit harder, which you more do on the DP World Tour and, and also on the PGA Tour. Um, but otherwise, it's, it's still the same game. It's eight, 18 tee boxes and 18 holes, so you're gonna, gonna get past some way, somehow. For, for you though, the competitive, it never leaves an, a professional athlete. How, how hungry are you still now after everything you've achieved in the game to keep mm. going out there competing and and, and trying to, to win every time you tee it up? Yeah, it's, really, it's really, really fun. Uh, and, and for me, as a, as a, the way I look at the game, it's, it's mainly a game against myself. How much of my potential do I have right now and all the all the lessons I've learned through the years, uh, what, what can I learn from, how, how, uh, how well can I use them to, to the, the best of my ability for this day? Um, and that's a big challenge and it, it has been uh, tournaments where I come off and finished about 20th and, and said to myself, no, it's a really, really good week because I, I didn't bring in a very good game. And then it's been other times I finished like third or fourth and I like, mm, felt like I wasted it. So it, it's uh, it's very important for me anyway to, to to understand that the game is against me and the golf course and, and uh, that's always the, the challenge I'm, I'm facing every day and, and, uh, and I really enjoy it. You know, it's an amazing sport, isn't it? With you as a player, me as a, a, a journalist in the game, watching the PNC Championship just before the Christmas break to see, you know, Gary Player competing, to see yeah. John Spieth and his dad, Tiger Woods and his mm. son Charlie, Justin Thomas. Isn't that mm. the beauty that, you know, you, you, you're still, you've played from a kid, now you're competing in your 50s, you've played all over the world and you're still there wanting to be, wanting to be such a, to be successful, hungry for, for, for more wins and, and still loving it as much as you did, I'm sure, as when you were a kid. It's just the most yeah. incredible sport. Yeah, it is. It is. And I mean, I've played tournaments where uh, on the on the um, Deep World Tour a couple of years ago when there was players there who were uh, 
quite a way into their senior career when I played with Miguel uh, Angel Jimenez in Switzerland my last year I think or one of the last few years of my tour or my, my deep world tour career and I was right at the end of my career and we played with someone who was like 19 or 20 it's like could have easily been his dad it's like <laughs> so it's, uh, it doesn't happen in many other sports and, and uh, we still competed on pretty level terms it's, uh, it's fantastic it really is. Listen, it'll be your first time teaming up at the One Greenway Invitational coming up beginning of February. You haven't played before, obviously last year was the inaugural year. Lots of positive vibes from the players who did compete. What have you What have you heard from, say, your fellow pros and how excited are you to, to turn up there and, and to play? It's going to be great uh, for us, uh, especially on the, on the year. On, on the year. Champions Tour, uh, the American players coming over because we're we're now in the right time zone. We're going to play really, really good golf course. I expect. I think the weather last year wasn't that great, at least for a couple of the days. But uh, but the guys said it was a really good golf course, and I'm looking forward to get into the competitive uh, mode again. And it's going to be a little bit of a relaxed atmosphere, obviously. But I'm really looking forward to get going again and, and to see the the Kinta Law course because I think I did play it about 35 years ago or something. <laughs> yeah, we were just saying, we believe, what, 1989, mm. one of your first events on the European Tour, is that yeah. right? It was my first event as a pro on the European Tour. I played a couple as an amateur. I uh, also played the Portuguese Open there. I got an in in invitation from uh, from the Portuguese Federation just about to turn pro. So it was a fantastic uh, possibility to come out and play. Um, play on the European Tour uh, as a pro and actually you know, I remember I played with Barry Lane who sadly just passed away so um, it kind of brought back a lot of memories when I saw that happen so yeah he would be missed but um, Quinto de Lago is a good place in my memory. Absolutely do you go back have you been back to Portugal much do you go sort of holiday or friends or family over the years? Uh, not so much uh, holidays more for full playing um, Portugal is definitely one of the favorite countries. It's really, really good weather. The people are very friendly. Golf courses are good, good quality. So uh, it's definitely one of my favorite country and uh, countries in Europe. And, and last year, or was it my last time we played? Or I played in Portuguese Masters. I had my girlfriend with me, and we stayed another three or four days. Went up to uh, to Lisbon and, and saw Sintra and, and um, Cascais and around that, those areas. So definitely, Portugal is one of the favorite places in Europe. Beautiful, yeah, nice. And obviously the quality of the field, a standout last year, it'll be fabulous again this time around. Mixed event obviously as well, Robert, some legendary players. How much does that get you excited about? About the prospect of, yeah, what will be a very fun week, a social week, but also hugely competitive? Yeah, I mean, when, especially now when, when us who plays in the Legends Tour and the Champions Tour in America, we are a little bit more relaxed off the golf course, uh, but when we, we tee it up on the first tee, it's, it's, it's full on go, that's for sure. But uh, definitely going to learn and most likely share some, some great stories with, with some legends of the game, both female and male. I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be good. It really is. Let's just go back to a little bit about your career, if we can. Obviously, great success, mm -hmm. 11 victories on the European Tour, but the European Tour Order of Merit back in 2008. When you sort of look at this stage in your career, back at some of your successes, and you're, as I said, you're still competitive, you're still out there, you still have that great hunger. But 2008, what what work had gone into achieving what you did that year? And what kind of came together, if you like, to, to um, achieve that consistency is not easy. No. You did it for that season. What, what kind of stood out for you that year? Uh, if you look on it statistically, I did drive the ball a bit better and I started to work with a new coach in August 2007 and um, my drive had never been that great. Uh, but through that year, I probably hit about 7% more fairways than I ever did and kept the same distance. So we found a very, very nice balance uh, of the whole game and that's why I was very good at the majors, did well in, in pretty much all of them and uh, did well in, in some big events and, and managed to to win two at the end of the season, uh, one which was, I mean, when you look, when I look back to it, it looks a bit weird that I won it. I shot a 75 the third day around Carnoustie at Alfred Dunhill and still managed to win it. I kind of felt like I played my way out of it, but um, uh, that's what happens when things go well. And, and um, I played really well that fall uh, in September. I won in, in, in Germany and then I played the Ryder Cup in, in Valhalla, where me personally, I played well. Um, and then back to, to Dunhill and I won that one. And then I did finish second or third, I think, in, in Portugal um, at Villamora. So I had a great September, October. When, you, when you're in that 
sort of that hot run of form. You know, you look at, say, Scotty Scheffler, the run that he was on last oh. year in the run-up oh. to the Masters, and he was just that hot player in goal for such a, a, a stretch. And we see it with pros on a regular basis. When you're in that run, how do you try and maintain it? Probably just keep just keep playing, not not trying to to think too much about it. For me, it's it's very much about um, maintaining the main uh, the mental state. The the for me, it's keep it simple, uh, keep it simple. Do the do the easy stuff good. Uh, make sure you don't make any mistakes, uh, easy mistakes. Don't, make sure you kind of um, yeah do, do the the basic stuff good. So that's kind of the most important thing. It's good advice. You know, you're, you're, I guess you're kind of known as quite an analytical player, but in terms of keeping it simple, is that quite good advice for junior golfers right now? Because a lot of guys, it's a complex game, physically mm. and mentally. How do you, through your career, maintain that simplicity? Yeah, I mean, I think the most important thing is to find the keys that work for you and, then, and keep maintaining those ones. Um, and then play within yourself and as I said before it's just uh, at the end of the day it's a game between you and the golf course it's not so much about trying to beat the guys uh, playing alongside you and, and, and in the field it's very easy to get caught up with those uh, results going on uh, around you so I think just stay in your own zone as much as you can and, and just keep keep playing and enjoying it and it's usually what what kind of um, for me anyway it's been the, the mental attitude has been the, the, the main key when I'm playing good or not playing so good that's usually what is good or bad What are some of your goals for 2023 then Robert? Uh, I mean I haven't won a tournament in the Champions Tour so obviously that would be fantastic to do that but um, but that's also an outcome so I'm trying not to, to focus too much on it I've, I focus on trying to do my my small little things a bit better see if I can drive it a bit better see if I can uh, a couple of more parts. Uh, I'm looking into a little bit on uh, at the end of the season last year. I did change how I practiced a little bit, so practiced a little bit more on uh, on my um, on in the putting. I was uh, more sort of holding out putts, uh, not just standing there on the putting in putting that I was playing little games for myself. There's a couple of apps on the phone you can use and things like that. So to keep it a bit more um, entertaining, keep it a bit more uh, sharper. So mm. those are things. Practice-wise, what does when you're out in the states? What and it's an off week. What does a typical week look like? Well, the problem you have on the challenge on the Champions Tour, which is very challenging, I think, is we very rarely have two weeks off. We so we play three weeks and we have one week off, and three week one week off, which is great. Uh, I mean, very very blessed to have a fantastic tour to play on. But it's hard to um, uh, to get off weeks and to get weeks where you actually practice. So very often it becomes, if you have a week off, you go home on the, quite often we play in a little bit smaller uh, market, so we end up on not, not so easy to get back. So usually you come back on Monday lunch, you do your laundry, you do your mail, and, and you make sure <laughs> you get sort of back to square one again, and then you start to go and uh, start to think about about uh, going again. Uh, but that's a good thing with the Champions Tour as well, we only play three days, so during tournaments, weeks we can practice a bit. We do play two uh, programs however quite often so we use the weeks, um, uh, tournament weeks a bit for practice but also when I'm at home. Um, it depends a little bit on the season in, in Charlotte because we have, um, we have really really good greens to my home course on, in the spring and the fall. The summers they tend to be a bit soft and, and uh, because of the heat so trying to work a little bit around that as well and where you are in your game. If you're playing really well a bit more um, maybe a short, short game, maybe play a bit, uh, but just keep it light and fun and easy. If you're not playing that great, it might be time to put in a bit of time on the range. You have to be a little bit, again, a little bit more dynamic on, on what you're doing and see how we get back to where you want to be for next week. Absolutely. So what does the schedule look like, say, before the one green invitation, then after? How are you How are you planning the diary the next few months? Yeah, now I go back to to uh, Charlotte in a couple of days. I'm back, and I use the the sixth of uh, January through to uh, when I go to Portugal. It's going to be last of like uh, thirtieth, I think, of January or something. Uh, I have like twenty four days or so, and it's going to be a mixture of, of gym work and and I'm going to go and see my coach at least once. Um, and then probably depending a bit on weather, I probably have one trip down to uh, to uh, Florida for some uh, proper short game because even though. Charlotte is kind of warm. The greens will not be up to, to tournament speed. So, but it's, try, it's trying to get 
to be as ready as I can without being tired when I get to Portugal because right after there it's quite intense in the beginning because we go directly from Portugal over to Florida to play another event uh, and, then, and then we're off and running so to speak so yeah, yeah. exciting stretch Listen, mm-hmm. let's, talk, let's talk Ryder Cup a bit obviously you mentioned oh. Valhalla you played um, yeah. th- then you were VC twice 18 mm-hmm. and 2020 mm-hmm. when we talk about next year sorry this year mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. how much did you enjoy the experience of being a vice captain part of that European setup? Yeah, I mean, it, it's um, it's fantastic. Uh, being a vice captain to Thomas when we played at home 2018 was was a really really cool experience. Uh, a home a home um, event is a big big difference from an away tournament because you have you have uh, control over the golf course. So for us, it was we worked together with the statistical team quite a bit to try and to understand what what is the American team doing well, what is the European doing well, and then we tried to. To maximize the setup of the of Paris National to the Europeans' benefit, and, and um, so that was really it's like trying to, to, to solve a riddle with about uh, 12 months to go, and, and it was really really cool. <clears throat> and uh, then obviously, at the end of the day, it's up to to the guys to deliver, but we kind of just at least set the stage a bit for them, and then then they played fantastic, and I mean the whole week was unbelievable with it. Crowds in Paris, the golf course, um, I mean, everything was, was fantastic. So, um, yeah, it was, I would say it's probably the most fun I've had on a, on a uh, or excited I've been on a, on a golf course more than when I've been playing because you it's kind of such a long build up. You build up over was it nine months or something like that when I was a part of it. And, and then to see it come to fruition and working out as good as it did. and, and um, I worked with Alex the last few holes when he held a long putt against Bryce in the Chapeau in the last hole. It was kind of, I, I don't think I've been so excited on the golf course ever as when that ball went in. <laughs> so, <laughs> not usually that, the one that jumps that high, but when it did go in, it's like, wow, that was pretty cool. <laughs> well, that's really interesting. Obviously, having played Ryder Cups and tasted mm. success, mm. That, to then be part of, you know, a very important part of the backroom staff. But really, a lot of guys, when I've spoken to them, the Solheim Cup as well as Ryder Cup, being in that vice captain role, it's fantastic. But sometimes, as a part of them, it's like, oh, I just want to be out of there. Just itching mm. to play. Whereas you, that's interesting. You said so honestly, that was probably one of the best experiences for you as a golfer, being part of that yeah. setup. Yeah. yeah, it was because it was more of uh, it was less uh, stressing in one way, less stress, less stressful. But it was also it was, I really loved the part of uh, understanding how we're going to set up the golf course and then set it up and then see it come to to fruition was really it was really really satisfying and. and uh, and obviously, when the guys played the way they did, and, and how things panned out, it was obviously even better. Um, and I could just walk on the other side and just enjoy the enjoy their playing. And, and uh, yeah, it was it was unbelievable. Yeah, not exactly. No no stress for you inside the ropes. Yeah, you could just enjoy. Yeah. And the party was pretty good, wasn't it, on that Sunday night? Yeah, it was good. It was really really good. <laughs> <laughs> and what about 2020? How did that experience differ for you? Obviously. Uh, it's a completely different experience uh, when you play away. Uh, now you are getting served what they kind of figured out how they want to set up the golf course. Um, and we kind of knew that we were a little bit behind the eight ball from the beginning. If you saw on their team the way they were playing, it was one of the strongest teams ever. Um, and that, that was just the, the facts from the beginning. And then we didn't get off to the greatest of starts, but it was. Um, Again, I mean, I've had two experiences as a, as a vice captain and two experiences as a player, and both of them have been one of being good and one of not being so good. So, get kind of got the flavor of both of it, and, and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a different. Um, it's a big, um, big, big difference between the two setups, home and away, and, and um, you get more involved when it is. Um, when I used at home. And then the other thing as well, what happened in, in Valhalla or in uh, Wisconsin Straits was we had the COVID year in between, so it was moved. So the, the the whole thing became a bit stretched out. So um, at the end, it, obviously it wasn't the most, uh, the best experience I've, I've ever had, but it's that's what comes with the game. I mean, there's very few uh, players who said that every round they play to be good. So it's, it's just the way it is. And you have to, to learn from it and, and go on. And, and there's a lot of valuable lessons in that week uh, as well. So, yeah, it was good. Absolutely. So, what's your expert opinion on on this year's edition? You've got the on, on paper, the Americans are 
favourites. They will go in as overwhelming yeah. favourites. But again, we have that home advantage. Is it going to yeah. be closer, do you feel, than maybe some people expect? I think we have a couple of question marks before that as well that needs to be straightened out. I think we have yeah. that LIB thing coming up in February, if I'm not wrong. Um, right. But we don't yeah. know who's going to be uh, allowed to play, especially on the European side. And I don't know how the DJ America is going to deal with it. So it's obviously a few unknowns yet. So. Um, but the Americans, they will be uh, favourites, I would say, for quite a long time uh, now, I would say for at least for a few years. The European team has a great base, uh, you think, a backbone of players that you think is going to be there or thereabouts for for quite some time so with, with, with Worry and, and Hobland and um, yeah, I can go down the list, there's a whole bunch of them there, there's really, really good players. Um, but the American team is extremely, extremely, extremely tricky. I, um, I totally agree with Eduardo Molinari, who's the vice captain now. And he said, if you can make sure that Patrick can play and Scottish Sheffield goes to LIB, it's going to make things much easier. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, I guess it's kind of a little bit where we are. Very, very, very strong players. But as a home team, you can set up the golf course uh, to your liking. Uh, I don't think we're going to have as big an advantage as we had in Paris. As we, I mean, I, I think I played that full golf course in Paris mid 90s first time and must have played it 20 times uh, 20 tournaments i must have done so um we had so much stats and we had so much knowledge about how that course is played or going to be played and what we can do and what works what doesn't work um in uh, in italy we have only played it once now twice right twice now i'm gonna go and play one more yeah but it's not going to be as easy i think to set it up um and, and use the advantage of the home course advantage. I think the golf course, I haven't played it myself, unfortunately, but I think it's a little bit an American style golf course. Um, and I'm not sure how much they can do. I know it's a couple of different types of grasses and the green on the fairways and the rough. So a couple of challenges like that they can, they can use, but I'm sure a very, very competent team with, with Luke and uh, Thomas, obviously, as a vice captain, has great experience and, and, uh, and um, uh, Eduardo Molinari and Nicholas Colsart are the other yes. uh, they're the ones that are picked so far so wait for the other side so that's what we did so um uh, it, it's a it's a very very strong strong lineup of uh, backroom uh, personnel so they're going to do what they can and and uh hope for the best and to see that the if uh if the home course advantage can make the the difference uh, it, it definitely definitely does make a big difference so let's hope for the best Let's hope for the best indeed. No, really good to get your insight on the Ryder Cup. Obviously, as you said, you've experienced good and bad as a player yeah. and uh, very good as a vice captain, obviously, with the uh, 2020 as well. It's really insightful to get your thoughts. So, Rob, it's been an absolute pleasure to chat to you on our One Greenway, uh, One Iron Chat. Very much looking forward to seeing you in the Algarve beginning of February. Enjoy yeah. your travels and a bit of warm weather training in Florida before then. And yeah, we look forward to seeing you in the Algarve. Thanks, Robert. Okay, thank you very much. Looking forward to seeing you. Thank you.